This is Insta360 X3 best settings for all modes tutorial. Let's go through all basic settings, modes, let's play some examples and lastly explain how you can improve night filming from this to this, which is quite important. I have enabled timestamps so you can find what you need faster. And for the new faces, my name is Zdeň Karela. If photography and video is your passion, consider subscribing. Before you start tweaking any settings, make sure your camera is updated to the latest firmware. To do so, connect your camera to the Insta360 app on your smartphone. The app will automatically tell you if you need to update the firmware. You can also check manually if you go to settings and hit device firmware info. Here it tells me that the camera is up to date, so I am good to go. Let's turn the camera on and swipe down to get to the basic settings. Let's hit the first icon on the top left, which is volume control. If you are somewhere on the location where you don't want to disturb with any sound, you can mute it off here. High is quite loud. Other options are medium and low. I keep it on medium. Indicator light on and off switch is next. It will control this light here. I like to keep that on to see what is going on. Audio settings are next. You can choose directional focus. What it means is that once you reframe the shot in a post in Insta360 Studio, the sound from that frame will be coming louder. The rest will be a bit quieter. Wind nose reduction, I find, produces a bit muffed sound. It's better to apply the wind noise reduction in the post. Stereo sound would be the best option. I have also enabled vibration. Sometimes when I'm filming on a little bit louder locations, I can't hear the beep, so I like to also feel the vibration as a confirmation. Quick capture is next. If you enable this, when the camera is off, you can just press the left circle button the camera will turn on and start recording. If you want to connect AirPods to your camera, you can do it here. Pre-recording allows you to quickly capture footage before you actually hit the record button. It saves the last 15 or 30 seconds of footage before you even press record when you activate this function. Press the shutter button and as X3 continues to record, the last 15 or 30 seconds of footage is added in and combined into a single file. This saves vital SD card storage and time when filtering through your footage. Brightness is for adjusting the brightness of the screen. You can connect a remote here. If you are using lens guards, you want to enable stabilization and stitching effect. And if you are going to be using a dive case, you will enable the dive case mode here. Let's go to settings. Here you can customize things further. The top part I left the way it was straight out of the box. Voice control I have enabled and I use it all the time. When you click on that, you can see all comments such as take photos, start recording, stop recording. I prefer saying this over having to press the button. Anti-flicker I have set to auto. However, you can choose the value you need depending on which country you live in. To get the best video quality, set video bitrate to high. Video sharpness, I have set to low. It is everybody's choice. However, I'm finding that the video looks the nicest when it's not as sharp. You can always add sharpness as you need later on in video editing software. External mic gain, I have set to zero decibels. If you find you need to increase it or lower it, you can do it here. Auto sleep, I have set to never. I don't like the screen shutting off all the time. Auto power off, I increased to five minutes. It's good to have this enabled because if you forget to turn it off, it will drain your battery. Languages below, SD card information. If you press that, you can format your card here. Customize button, this button, will let you choose between switch to single lens or 360 mode or take photo or take video. I personally prefer the switch between single lens and 360 filming. If you find that there is some issue with stabilization, you can run gyro calibration to fix that. And if you need to perform factory reset, you can do it here. Let's close settings, hit the video icon and go through all 360 camera modes settings first. 
Then we will go through all single lens mode settings. The first one is video. Let's go to frame rates and resolution. The highest quality recommended settings for 360 action shots are 5.7K resolution and 30 frames per second rate. Even though 24 frames per second is more cinematic for normal videos such as vlogging, talking camera or sit down talking head, when it comes to action shots, it's better to go with a higher frame rate to avoid motion blur, the soap opera effect. So you would select your frame rates based on what you want to film with this camera. Let's close this and swipe to the left. If you will be filming during the day, I'm finding that the camera does very good job on its own filming in automatic mode, unless you are someone who specifically prefers to film in manual mode. So let's leave this in automatic mode, but let's tweak some further settings. First setting is the color profile. There are three choices, standard, lock, and vivid. If I was just doing a quick video where I want to edit in Insta360, I would leave it on standard. To get more details in highlights and shadows, you might consider selecting lock. It's going to look very much washed out, so you have to apply LUT over the video to get proper color correction before you start color grading. Insta360 has this LUT available on their website, so it's easy. I'll link it below in a video description for you to download. Just drop it over the clip, and then you do your own color grading if you like. And lastly, Vivid will give you a very colorful result if this is something you prefer. When it comes to white balance during the day, when the lighting conditions are very steady, I'm in open space, I just usually leave it on auto, but if I film in the woods in a city, I like to set it to 55,000 for daytime. I usually tweak white balance further in a video editing software. If you are going to be filming sunrise or sunset and want colors to pop, you can set 6500 Kelvin, which is going to be very warm. It's your personal preference. Let's move to the exposure settings. I'm finding that Insta360 cameras overexpose videos, so to bring back details in highlights, I keep this setting on minus 0.5. If I film on extremely bright days, I even do minus one sometimes. You can always bring the shadows up in the editing program. However, it's hard to bring highlights down if there is no data. Isolated exposure I have set to off. What is that? If you enable this, this feature can automatically adjust the exposure of the two lenses separately when there are large light variations between the lenses. Let's talk about filming at night. If you are going to be filming in automatic mode, you are going to get this footage. Because there is such a difference between the dark and bright areas, it's going to be very overexposed and you might get some grain in the footage as well. It's best to shoot in manual mode. Once you switch to manual mode, you are going to get two more settings, shutter speed and ISO. I'm filming at 30 frames per second. I'm going to bring the shutter speed way up between 100 and 200. I'm going to select one 160th, as this will also get rid of lights to be spilled as I'm moving through. And then I'm just going to adjust ISO accordingly to keep blacks black and highlights not overblown. ISO 400, 500, it really depends how much light you have. For night filming, you might also want to adjust white balance. White balance 4000 for night, or if you have many yellow lights in a city and want a warmer look, you can push it to 5000. And this is the result you get. Active HDR is next. There is not much you can control here. To get the best quality, it is 5.7K, highest resolution at 30 frames per second. Let's close this, swipe left, and here you can see you can only change white balance settings. Daytime filming is 5500 Kelvin. If you will be filming sunrise and sunset, you can go with warmer tones, again 6500 Kelvin. Next one are time lapses. For the best quality, it is recommended to film in 8K at 30 frames per second. 
In the Insta360 Studio, you can then create motion in any direction you want. There is one more setting at the top, which is interval. What settings to choose? If you will be filming moving traffic, fast moving clouds, or you will be driving, choose one second. If you will be filming sunsets, sunrises, slower moving clouds or crowds, choose two seconds. If you will be filming moving shadows, sun across the sky with no clouds, choose 30 seconds. And lastly, if you will be filming something like fast growing plants, use 120 seconds. For that though, you will need external battery. Swipe left to get to the settings. And again, color profile, I have set to lock because I'm using Insta360 LUT. If you don't want to color grade, just use standard. White balance is set to 5,500 Kelvin. If you will be filming during the day and 6,500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Let's bring down the exposure to EV minus 0.5 to preserve highlights and keep isolated exposure off. Time shift is similar to hyperlapse. You'll be filming it while you are on the go, moving, walking, or riding. Recommended resolution is 5.7K and 30 frames per second shutter speed. Let's swipe left to get to settings. And the same thing as before, color profile is lock. If you will be using Insta360 LUT, if you don't want to color grade, just use standard. White balance is set to 5,500 Kelvin for daytime and 6,500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Exposure is set to minus 0.5 to preserve highlights and keep isolated exposure off. Bullet time is next. For that, you would use one of these tools. I'll link both below the video in a video description. Highest resolution is 4K. Frame rate is automatically set to 120. If you want slower motion, you can go to 3K where you get 180 frames per second. I keep it at 4K. Let's close this. Swipe left to get to settings. And the same thing as before, I have color profile set to lock because I like to use Insta360 LUT. If you don't want to color grade, just use standard. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin for daytime and 6500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Exposure is set to 0.5 to preserve highlights. Loop recording is next. This mode records video continuously but only saves the last fixed length segment. You can use this as your dash cam. It is useful if you Hopefully never, if you ever end up in a car accident, then you have a record of it, but you can certainly use it for other things. Recommended resolution is 5.7K and 30 frames per second shutter speed. Here at the top is duration, where you can select how long the segment should be saved. You can do one minute all the way to 30 minutes. Let's close this and swipe left to get to settings. And let's repeat the same thing all over again. Color profile lock if you will be using Insta360 LUT. If you don't want to color grade, just use standard. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin for daytime and 6500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Exposure is minus 0.5 to preserve highlights and keep isolated exposure off. Star Labs shoots videos with the star trail effects. Ratio, resolution, and timer you cannot change. It's all automatic. Let's swipe left to get to settings. First one is INSP. What's that? INSP stands for Insta360 Photo. It's a proprietary format used by Insta360s to store data. To make it usable outside of the camera, you need to export those files to a standard JPEG format. You have choice to also use INSP plus RAW. That is what I have selected. If you would shoot this in automatic mode, you would select the recommended white balance for nighttime, which is 3200 Kelvin. Exposure leave on zero and keep isolated exposure off. If you want to film in manual mode, select 30 seconds long shutter speed to get the movement of the stars and ISO 800. 
Burst mode will take nine photos very fast. It's great for action shots. Ratio and resolution is set. You can, however, enable a timer so you have enough time to get in the right position. I prefer five seconds. Swipe left to get to settings. By default, INSP format is selected. You can also choose INSP plus RAW. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin for daytime and 6500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Exposure sets to minus 0.5 to preserve highlights and keep isolated exposure off. Next mode is interval. Interval takes photos at specific intervals depending on what interval you selected. Ratio is set. Highest resolution you can get is 72 megapixels and below is interval. It starts at three seconds and goes all the way to 120 seconds. Swipe left to get to settings. And the same thing again, INSP format is selected by default. You can also choose INSP plus RAW. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin for daytime and 6500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Exposure is set to minus 0.5 to preserve highlights and keep isolated exposure off. If you want to take photos in high dynamic range, you can select HDR mode. Ratio and resolution are selected by default and a timer is available. I like to use five seconds. Let's close this and swipe left to get to settings. Here you have a choice between INSP file and pure shot. What's pure shot? It's an AI powered shooting mode which will give you a more vibrant HDR image. I find that the feature is great, so I have this enabled. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin for daytime and 6500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. AEB is auto exposure bracketing. It takes photos and different exposures and then combines them together to create one image. I like to select the highest number of photos, which is nine. Exposure I have selected to lowest, which is plus minus three. Last mode in 360 camera mode is a photo mode. Ratio two by one is given. The highest resolution you can get is 72 megapixels. I have also selected a five seconds timer. Let's swipe left to get to settings. INSP, INSP plus RAW or pure shot are your choices. I personally go back and forth between INSP plus RAW and pure shot. If I want an amazing quality and edit on my own later, I select INSP plus RAW. If I want something very quick without editing, then I just select pure shot. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin for daytime and 6500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Exposure I have set to minus 0.5 to preserve highlights and isolated exposure is off. Let's go from 360 camera mode to single lens camera mode. And let's start with the video first. You can switch between the inner and outer lens. Let's go to resolution settings. At the top, you have default FOV and FOV plus. What is the difference between those two? Default FOV is a default field of view. FOV plus offers the widest field of view. If you go with default FOV, you get higher resolution 4K and in camera stabilization. If you go with FOV plus, you will get lower resolution 2.7K. You will also apply flow stabilization, 360 horizon lock and adjust aspect ratio in Insta360 app or studio. So it is up to you how wide you want to go. I stay with the default FOE mode most of the time. 30 frames per second frame rate is recommended. If you want the film slow motion, you have to lower the resolution to 3.6K and now you can go up to 60 frames per second. So you could slow it down up to 40% if you place it on a 24 frames per second timeline. There are two options when it comes to ratio 16 by 9 and 9 by 16. 16 by 9 is the wide one, 9 by 16 is a portrait. Next to it are further field of view options. 
action is for fast moving action. Ultra wide angle has a bit of a distortion. Wide angle has no distortion. And last one, linear, is a narrow angle with no distortion. Let's swipe left to go to settings. And again, use color profile lock if you will be using Insta360 LUT. If you don't want to color grade, just use standard. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin for daytime and 6500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Exposure is set to minus 0.5 to preserve highlights. Let's go to me mode. Here you would use an invisible selfie stick to record yourself. Here you have a choice of ratio between 16 by 9 and 9 by 16. I use 16 by 9 most of the time. Field of view options are next. Max, which is widest angle with distortion. Action is for fast moving action. Ultra wide angle has a bit of a distortion. Wide angle has no distortion. And last one, linear, is a narrow angle with no distortion. I prefer the wide angle with no distortion. Resolution is given, 1080p. 30 frames per second is recommended, but you can go all the way to 60 frames per second if you need slow motion. Loop recording is next. The same thing as an in 360 camera mode. This mode records video continuously, but only saves the last fixed length segment. Here you can select the inner or outer lens. Let's go to resolution settings. Default field of view will give you higher resolution, 4K. FOE plus will give you 2.7K. Recommended frame rate is 30 frames per second. And if you need to film slow motion, you can go up to 60 frames per second. You can choose between 16 by 9 and 9 by 16 aspect ratio. I have 16 by 9, which is landscape again. Duration I have set to 5 minutes, but you can set it anywhere between 1 minute and 30 minutes. Field of viewer options are here as well. Action is for fast moving action. Ultra wide angle has a bit of a distortion. Wide angle has no distortion. And last one, linear, is a narrow angle with no distortion. Let's swipe left to check out settings. Set color profile lock if you'll be using Insta360 LUT. If you don't want to color grade, just use standard. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin for daytime and 6500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Exposure is set to minus 0.5 to preserve highlights. Photo mode is the last mode in single lens camera mode. <laughs> you can choose inner or outer lens. Let's hit the resolution settings. Ratio at the top offers 16 by 9, which is landscape, 1 by 1, which is square, and 9 by 16, which is portrait. I like to keep it at 16 by 9. Field of view settings are next, ultra wide, wide, and linear, which is narrow. I personally prefer wide with no distortion. The highest resolution you are going to get is 36 megapixel, and the timer I have set is 5 seconds. Let's close this and swipe left to get to settings. INSP, INSP plus RAW, or pure shot are your choices. If you want just a quick snapshot, select INSP. If you want amazing quality and edit your own way later on, select INSP plus RAW. If you want something quick without editing, with a lot of colors, select Pure Shot. White balance is set to 5500 Kelvin for daytime and 6500 Kelvin for sunrise or sunset. Exposure is set to minus 0.5 to preserve highlights and keep isolated exposure off. I hope this video helped, so give it a thumbs up if it did, and don't forget to subscribe for more. I'll be creating very shortly another Insta360 tutorial, this time Insta360 Studio and App, complete walkthrough tutorial for beginners. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ahoy.